Hello and welcome to Freedom Watch, your daily dose of raw liberty streaming online at foxnews.com. I'm your host, Judge Andrew Napolitano, here defending freedom, defending your natural rights, and defending your right to have a government that stays within the confines of the Constitution. The Republican primary race for governor in the Lone Star State is on. The current Texas governor, Rick Perry, who's been in office since the year 2000 and is the longest serving governor in Texas history, is up by 11 percentage points in the latest Rasmussen poll. But there's a growing dissatisfaction in Texas with establishment big government types of either major party. My next guest is Republican gubernatorial candidate Deborah Medina, whose campaign grew out of the grassroots inspired tea parties and town hall meetings all over the state. She is taking on the status quo, defending and preserving the Constitution, individual liberty, eliminating property taxes, and restoring sovereignty to the state of Texas. Deborah, Welcome to Freedom Watch. Good afternoon, Judge. It is great to be with you. So you're running against two household names, Governor Rick Perry and Senator Kay Bailey Hutchison. How's it going? It is going great. I tell you, we are traveling. I am traveling all over Texas. People are hungry for freedom. You know, that's a popular message, and we are championing the very constitutional republic ideas that our founders did. People are jumping on board the campaign and you're going to watch those numbers grow in Texas. Uh, I'm interested in your choice to run in the Republican primary. I mean, you and I have talked about this on air and off. And you know my view that we really have a one party system in this country called the big government party. There's a Republican vision of it which likes war and deficits and assaults our civil liberties. There's a democratic vision of it, which likes wealth transfer and taxes and assaults our commercial liberties. But you've chosen to stake your claim in the Republican Party. Why and how can you get over what was done by Republicans in the years that George Bush occupied the White House? Boy, I, I think, Judge, that that vision that you described is accurate, but it's a corrupted one, is it not? It's certainly not the vision that the early leaders in the Republican Party had. They understood the Constitution. They understood that private property ownership and gun ownership were essential elements of freedom, that this republic was founded following a rule of law, a law that applies equally to everyone. We've got to get back to those ideas. That's the Republican that I am, the Republican that understands the proper limited role of government. I think that's the Republican that most Texans are, and they are jumping on board this campaign. Deborah Medina, is there a disconnect between the average typical Republican primary voter, whether it's in Texas or anywhere else in the country, and the leadership of the party? Because the vision that you represent which I could not possibly endorse more than I do, is not the vision that came from John McCain when he ran for president as the head of the Republican Party, the nominal head of it, just a year ago. You're absolutely right. I said in my speech before the Texas State Republican Convention just a year ago, that a year and a half ago, that the grassroots is very united in this country. The disconnect is between the people and our elected leadership, we better start removing incumbents. Republicans better quit renominating entrenched big government incumbents or we're going to continue to lose races. We have an opportunity. People ask me, can you win? I said, can Rick Perry win next November? Because I'm not sure he can. You know, uh, Governor Perry uh, toyed with the idea of seceding from the union, which is something that I have argued for many years is an inherent right of a sovereign state particularly Texas, for a couple of reasons. One, Texas was a, an independent country before it joined the Union. And two, there actually is an agreement between the Congress and the then legislature of Texas providing for this uh, secession. But if the government of Texas as it now stands were to remove the state from the Union, wouldn't the Texas state government become the oppressor of freedom that the federal government now is? You pick up, I don't know if you've been following my campaign, but we've been talking about that very thing we are doing in Texas under our Republican leadership, the very things that people are angry at Washington for doing. We, I am interested in saving 
the country, not in secession. I understand, as you talk about a lot, Jefferson said, it is the unquestionable right of the state to determine when federal government overreaches and the rightful remedy is nullification and secession. That's what we ought to be using. We ought to be using it aggressively. We ought to be limiting government in Austin, Texas as well. What would be different about the government in Texas uh, under uh, Governor Medina? W would you really be able to get rid of property taxes? Now, I, I say this as a person that lives in New Jersey, where we have the highest property taxes in the union. So the thought of having no property taxes is like going to heaven. This is not a, a fundamental financial issue for me. It is a freedom issue. When you take from man what he works for, he quits working. We must find another way to fill the pothole, fund the police officer, build a new wing on our school. We cannot steal from our people and expect to live free and live prosperous. We're going to eliminate property tax in Texas. We're going to raise the necessary revenue with a sales tax, a consumption tax that is the least oppressive to the economy. I would think that the elimination of the property tax in a state like Texas or the, 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 the platform offering to eliminate the property tax in the state of Texas would resonate very well with Republicans in that state. I think people really are interested in property rights, property ownership. They understand the value of that. The other thing we've got to touch on in Texas besides taxes is the overuse of the eminent domain authority. And that has been abused greatly in this state. We've got to get that back to a limited government um, function and begin to, again, restore private property ownership in Texas, gun ownership in Texas, securing our border and standing hard against the federal government using nullification and interposition. All right, Deborah Medina, let's talk for a minute about uh, eminent domain. I'm actually surprised to hear you say that because I, I thought, living and working here in the Northeast, that Texas was a state where property rights were respected. Now, I'm, I'm of the Jefferson view which is that the only legitimate uh, use of property is the way a willing buyer and a willing seller want to use it. So I don't think there even is a moral right to eminent domain. But I lost that argument. The right is in the Constitution. But it's supposed to be used, that is, the government is only supposed to pay to take uh, prop, private property when it pays fair market value for it and uses it for a legitimate public purpose. Is the government in Texas taking property from people against their will and then selling it to other private owners as opposed to using it for some public purpose? Yes. And we saw an effort in the legislative session two sessions ago put a constitution, to try to put a constitutional amendment on the ballot, get us some stronger legislation. The governor actually vetoed that. We did get some legislation out of this session. It is a, stay, a step in the right direction, but it is clearly not a fix. Kilo hurt all of the country, and it is hurting Texas. We've seen that authority misused and abused by all levels of government entity in the state of Texas, the state as well as counties, cities, and municipal governments. The, the Kilo to which you refer is the Supreme Court's abominable, hateful uh, Kilo decision. Uh, in which it said that, yes, a government can take private property and sell it to another private uh, owner as long as that will uh, produce higher uh, tax revenues, as if that's some kind of a benefit. It's not going to lower taxes. It's just going to give the government more tax dollars to spend. The Kilo case is a particular disaster because it involved taking money in order to build a parking lot for Pfizer in New London, Connecticut. And after they took the property, Pfizer pulled out of New London, Connecticut. That's right. So Mrs. Kilo lost her house, lost her property, lost her natural rights, and it didn't even go for the purpose for which it was taken. Are those things happening in Texas? Well, we certainly had a long-term push by the governor for something called the Trans-Texas Corridor or the NAFTA Superhighway, taking property from Texans all across the state, the biggest land grab in our history, to give it to a foreign company to have dominion over our property. And, and many of us believe that that initiative is not dead. I, I can't believe that that could happen in a freedom-loving state uh, like Texas. Deborah Medina, if people watching and listening to us now want to learn more about your campaign, uh, is there a website or, or is there a place to which they can go? MedinaForTexas.com. We need 
shoe leather and elbow grease in this race. We are going to win, and Texas is, as you and Glenn have indicated, Texas is going to lead the country, but we're going to have to do something different. Deborah Medina is stepping out to do that. Deborah Medina, thanks for joining us on Freedom Watch. Thank you, Judge.